So the January transfer window is upon us and the aim for this window is to raise as much capital as possible, either in this window or the next one. So the window has officially opened and we have made quite a lot of offers for quite a lot of players, pretty much all of them on approach contracts. We've got £4 million to spend and £174,000 available in the wages, so we've got plenty of room to manoeuvre. Now, the idea with these is a lot of these players will be coming in our first team squad, either as starters or backup players, and once they come in, we will look to sell one of our most valuable assets in that position to raise funds. So, obviously, Crystal Palace are financially pretty unstable. Uh, we did fix that in the summer in a major way, but we've still got a lot of way to go to be able to get us into a rich position for a Premier League title uh, summer transfer window, hopefully. Now, a lot of these players as well, they'll probably come into the club, be in our first 11 for the rest of the championship season, and then they'll probably be sold in the summer as we look to bring in fresh faces for our Premier League campaign. So that is the strategy for now, is to bring players in for six months, hopefully they're brilliant and they really play well, and then hopefully their value increases to the point where we can sell them for massive profits and bring in better players with our Premier League reputation. It's a little bit of a risky gamble because I risk massively upsetting and disrupting our current squad who are doing very very well in the league um, by bringing in new faces they'll need time to sell so it is a little bit of a risk and that's probably why i don't expect us to win the title this season i am hoping for automatic promotion but um yeah it's going to be a big turnaround in players hopefully we'll be able to sell at least 20 to 30 million pounds worth of players during this transfer window we won't be reinvesting that money not heavily anywhere uh, we'll be banking that for our summer transfer window because if Crystal Palace, if we get promoted this season and we want to beat Huddersfield, Birmingham, Leeds, we need to have as much money as is humanly possible to be able to spend on our first 11 in the Premier League. That was definitely the downfall with uh, Nottingham Forest last season. We just didn't have enough money to be able to improve the squad and I want to get that right with Crystal Palace. So when players start accepting contracts that's when i will show you them and show you them coming into the squad we do have five games or sort of play during the january transfer window which might increase due to the fa cup third round i'm pretty sure the fourth round if we are to beat middlesbrough will be somewhere in here uh, a lot of big games in here as well fulham and middlesbrough all beat us this season as did bournemouth actually so we're playing three sides who have already beat us this season so hopefully we'll be able to see the growth in our squad and get wins in every single game so that's pretty much it that is the January transfer window sort of, you know, talked about. We're probably going to end up bringing in maybe 10 players and look to sell 10 others. Um, it might not be that drastic, depending on who accepts contracts and who doesn't. But I am hoping for a big turnover. It's going to be the biggest January transfer window in terms of incomings and outgoings we've ever had. And our first signing is about to be confirmed. This one was the one of the few that wasn't an approach sign. It was Jim Garcia for £1.9 million. A 19-year-old Colombian centre-back who will come in and no doubt in my mind be our best centre-back that we have at the club. With him coming in, that means we can't afford to lose one of our centre-backs. And this is the strategy. So he's a four-star, five-star. And with him coming in now, I've already identified Pasqualino Cornio as the man who we will sacrifice. Now, he's valued at £7.5 million. We signed him on a free transfer in the summer. If we were to get £7.5 million pounds from him, absolutely fantastic. I think I would be, <laughs> as he is a free transfer, I'd be pretty much happy with whatever we're able to get for him. But uh, this is the man who's going to be the sacrificial lamb. And here we have some more signings being confirmed. Matthias Lachaud, he is a striker slash left winger. Uh, he will end up being the replacement for Killian Adam, who is our backup left winger. So we will look to sell Killian Adam on who we signed in the summer. But uh, we'll accept that offer. I'm assuming they're not going to want much more than the 100k he's currently valued. David Nespo is the next one. Another approach. This time it's from Slavia Prague. He's currently valued at 775k. We'll see how much they want from him. He will probably come in and be our starting central midfielder. And Martin Toth. A decent little centre-half, maybe not quite first 11 ready, but he can at least come in and be a backup player for us. So Matthias Lachaud, the left winger come striker, the 190k to bring him in immediately, that's absolutely fine by me. David Nespo, the central midfielder, the 125k, I was expecting more than that, so that's brilliant. And Martin Toth, the centre-back, he is currently valued at 87k, and they want 100k for him to move immediately. I'll take it, it's not too much. And we have got an offer in. For Pasqualino Cornio, a £6.75 million offer after reaching some clauses with wage contribution as well. 
ideally I wouldn't like to accept that offer. I would want to be able to get him for a flat fee, get them sold, uh, and hopefully we can make that happen. And there's our strategy paint off here. Capo Zapasodi, he's done decent stuff for us, but we've got an 11 million pound offer in from now from Leeds. He's our other centre back will come in and replace him directly in the squad for what did we just pay like 100k or something for him? 425k to replace him, 11 million pounds in. It's an absolute no brainer. So the first game of today's episode has concluded and we've beat Middlesbrough 2 0 in the FA Cup third round. Killian Adam and Jacob Samuelson with the goals. So our next one potentially coming in is Roberto De Giulio. He is a left back who's currently injured for four weeks and two months. So uh, we do want to bring him in. He is our best left back at the club. Should we be able to get him over the line? Um, but do we want to bring him in? I think I think we do. We'll bring him in now. He's at our club. He can recover. And we'll get him into the first team as soon as is humanly possible. Forget that. They won £2.4 million to bring him in now. I'll, may I'll maybe wait till the back end of the January transfer window. See if we can get that under maybe a million. <laughs> see if we can get it that, uh, that low and look to bring him in. He he'll have less to run on his injury as well. So uh, that's not a deal that we'll do right now. Another sale, Germain Blanchard, whose contract was run out at the end of the season. We've managed to get 425k from him from Coventry City. And that is absolutely fine by me. Not someone who we've replaced in the squad. He was superfluous to the squad anyway. Another one who we just don't need is Stephen Sessignon. He's leaving to join Shrewsbury Town on loan for the rest of the season. Paying 70% of his wages. Uh, they've got an optional future fee of £250,000. That was mandatory, but uh, Stephen Sessignon rejected the contract. So it has now become optional. He's another one coming in. Paulinho, another left-sided player. He will be coming in. We're not actually going to sell anybody for to make room for him. Uh, we're already trying to sell Killian Adam. Well, let's see how much they want from him. He's currently valued at 62k. They'd won 45k to bring the deal over the line. Now, that's absolutely fine by me. And we have ourselves another left-sided player. Decent potential to an half-star as well. Not too bad at all. He will probably be paying back up to uh, our other left-winger that we've just signed. And uh, happy to bring him in. So we've just suffered our first defeat and God knows how many games Bournemouth have done the double over us. Andy Starkey with a hat-trick got them the win. Jacob Samuelson and Oscar Renberg scored for us. And if you look at the match stats, we did dominate the game, but not happy. And there we have it. £11 million coming in from Leeds United. Zappasodi will be joining them. 27-year-old Italian central midfielder who was decent, but uh, wasn't really part of my first 11 plans anyway, so... He has pretty much appeared for the entirety of this January transfer window in terms of the business we've already done. Um, there is still more business I would like to do, though. He's another route. Pasqualino Cornio is going to... I did end up accepting that offer from Bursa Sport. Uh, £5.25 million up front could rise to £6.75 million, And we will accept that offer and see him later. We signed him on a free transfer in uh, the summer. He's played decently for us. 21 games in the Championship. 7.07 .07 average rating. But we've got better players now. And we'll take that offer all day. And he is somebody coming in that we're paying pretty big money for in regards to our transfer budget. David Pierre, a defensive midfielder who will come in and without a doubt be our absolute starter. Now, Nacho Gonzalez has been playing there so far this season and doing fantastically. But when you get the sort of opportunity to sign this kind of player for a relatively cheap fee, you've got to take it. And of course, now bringing him in opens up a spot in the squad to be able to sell. And that spot is going to be Luis Lorenko. He is currently our backup defensive midfielder, valued at £7.75 million. Let's see how much we can get from So we've got essentially a £10 million offer from Victoria Pleasant for Luis Lorenko. We are going to accept that deal and reject all of the other offers. Hopefully, he will be willing to uh, join Victoria Pleasant. He's the only one <laughs> he's not actually saying he's interested in. So he might end up rejecting the contract from them, but hopefully he will leave and that will bolster our financial coffers just a little bit further. Well, there's been plenty of games where we've undeservedly lost or drew, so dropped points in the end. This was a game where we did not deserve to win, but we did manage to get a 2-0 home win against Fulham. David Nespo with a 72nd minute goal put us in front, and Jacob Samuelson completed the scoring in the 91st minute. And there's Lewis Lorenzo accepted the offer from Victoria Pleasant for £8 million. Uh, that could rise to 10 million quid. We don't get too much of it into our transfer budget, but that is not the aim of these sales. The aim is to get our Crystal Palace in such a good financial situation that they are willing to 
throw money at me if we are to get promoted. As you can see, we've got £11 million left of our transfer budget. We only get 40% of that. It has been reduced because of the amount of sales we have made. And there, But there, the more important thing is there is £40 million in the overall balance. And we are projected to have a £20 million balance at the end of this season. It might mean they're a little bit more loose with the transfer budget if we are to get in the Prem. That's what I'm certainly hoping for anyway. We are looking to sell Enrico Del Prato as well. Just a player who's sitting in our squad doing absolutely nothing, earning 10 grand per week. So uh, we've accepted a 325k offer. We still have plenty of other players that we're looking to sell currently. Um, it's probably not going to happen till the very end of the January transfer window. I haven't been able to attract bids right now. The likes of Killian Adam um, haven't really got that much interest in them from other clubs. But uh, we've still got a while to go yet in the January transfer window. I am still looking for other players to potentially sign. Of course, we've still got that left back who we might end up potentially bringing in. He's currently valued at 1.2. You still want 2.2 million pounds. I'm, I'm not really happy about that. He is still injured for another five weeks. So we'll wait for a further week. If it gets to maybe below 1.5 million, we'll bring him in because he is a better left back than what we've got at the club. And uh, I would like to bring him in. We did miss out on such a massive player. He could have been a great player for us in the Premier League. And Neko Inzalti. It's probably a good job we didn't sign him. <laughs> He's a great join Sevilla on a free transfer at the end of the season. He looks absolutely phenomenal. And I would have loved to have made him part of our squad. But uh, uh, we couldn't offer him 54k per week like Sevilla could. So we do at least beat Bournemouth once this season. Unfortunately, it's in the FA Cup fourth round. Which... Is good, but I'd rather have beat them in the league. 3-0, Jacob Samuelson, David Fernandez, and Matthias Lachaud with the goals. And there is Enrico Del Patro leaving the club. 325k brought in, 10k per week, pretty much saved on his wages. Happy with that. Uh, makes all the financial sense in the world. So we've just played a Middlesbrough away from home and absolutely smashed them 4-0. We were actually down to 10 men from the 26th minute. They also levelled things up in terms of 10 men with Jorge Coronado getting sent off in the 63rd. Um, but Oscar Remberg, Gilbert Leroux, Jacob Samuelson and David Fernandez with the goals. So the final game of today's episode was at home against Blackburn Rovers and we have won 4-0. Calvin Salkin, Jim Garcia, Jacob Samuelson and Martin Toth with the goals in this one. So this will be the league table when we end today's episode. We are 7 points clear from Derby in 2nd and uh, 9 points clear from Millwall in 3rd. Pretty productive episode in terms of games and we're definitely starting to pull away a little bit more there's still two days left of the transfer window i will be looking to sell players and of course one more probably coming in roberto de julio uh he's currently 1.9 million uh hopefully that reduces just a little bit more during the two days that's left but i will be bringing him in before the end of the window so there's one sale that will probably be happening before the end of the transfer window. Scott Paycock, our backup left back, will leave the club for £1.3 million if he accepts the contract offer. And uh, that will leave the space for the Palmer left back to come in. And there is Scott Peacock gone, £1.3 million in the coffers. I'm not really getting any offers for Killian Adam, which is a little bit of a problem. He's not really going to be a part of our squad uh, for the foreseeable future. We've offered him out for 23 that hasn't uh, attracted any bidders. We're going to offer him out for 1.5. Of course, he was a summer transfer window signing at 775k. So as long as it will make even just a little bit of profit, I would probably end up taking that. Roberto de Julio, then we are going to bring him in for £1.9 million. He will become part of our squad for the rest of the season. And he will become our starting left back once he is fit. He's still injured for another either between nine days and three weeks. So that's not too bad. And uh, yeah, very happy to, to have brought him in. He's got plenty of potential to grow. 21 years old, he's pretty well-rounded as a wing-back. And we haven't really had a natural left-footed left-back. We've always been playing, um, I can't even remember, Saki Denley, who was actually right-footed at left-back. And it's not something I really like. So we've offered him out a couple of more times. I think Killian Adam is just going to remain at the squad for the rest of the season. He might end up finding himself some game time if there is like a major injury crisis or something like that. And with him staying, that's probably the end of our January transfer business. It has been quite a busy one. In terms of what we've done this season for Crystal Palace, we have brought in £89 million worth of player sales while only spending 17.5. And we've got a far, far superior squad to what we had when we first joined the club. Financially, there's a £45 million left in the balance. There's £10 million left in the transfer budget. 
and we have what 130k available in the wage budget in terms of projections expected to be finishing the season on 32 million pounds bearing in mind that was by far in the negatives when we first came here uh so let's see how we finish the season with 32 million and let's see how we get promoted to the premier league what sort of transfer budget do you think that would actually land us i'm thinking maybe about 50 million pounds in terms of a transfer budget if we are to stick on course and get promoted this season which of course we can then supplement with player sales ourselves and that is very very much the plan going forward just look at the schedule look at them look at that after the start of the season was a little bit ropey but then things started to click and ignoring this Bournemouth defeat which is annoying uh, it's all a sea of greens and a few little yellows dotted in and around there in terms of the next episode then i am going to be bringing you back for this birmingham game we have in the fa cup fifth round and the burnley game at home in the championship and then of course the episode after that will be the end of season in term let's have a quick look see how our former clubs are performing barnsley currently sitting fifth so they have potential to grow up in the playoffs and um, it's unlikely that they will get automatic at this point i don't think eight points away from uh, derby is a lot to recover with only 12 games remaining leads sitting in 13th they are not getting promoted they will be a championship club once again uh next season is there any of our players left i don't think there is alvaro yepes is still there he's still fantastic and he's not really getting much game time in the championship if he was available for a couple of million i'll probably look to make that purchase but uh he's not in terms of the Premier League, then Huddersfield sitting fifth. That is nice to see. Birmingham currently sitting in eighth, and Nottingham Forest currently sitting in eleventh. So hopefully, no uh, relegations this season from our former clubs. Let's see if uh, Nottingham Forest, in particular, sold anybody massive in the uh, January transfer window. Jamie Coyle's left. Armando Howard's left. Lee Pierce has left. Adam Lewis has left. Uh, but no real major player sales from at least the major players that will we left there apart from magyar that happened in the summer but anyway boys if you have enjoyed today's video please consider leaving a like and if you are enjoying my content get yourself subscribed but until next time take it easy